Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to another Blunt Talk with Shane Alexander. We're driving, trying to find somewhere to stay because you cannot trust everybody that tells you they love you. Now, you can trust people that show you some loyalty. That you can trust. Trust me, you can. And with loyalty, as I said plenty of times, you know, you tend to get love and, you know, that everything else follows in suit happiness, respect, love and happiness. Nothing makes you know. But I've come to the understanding, and I'm sure a lot of you guys have too, because we're all growing, we're all reaching new heights, new levels, leveling up, leveling up, level up, leveling up, leveling up, uh uh. You come to the point in your life where you just don't want to deal with nobody's bullshit no more. You come to the point in your life where you rather respect yourself than love yourself. And I don't know, just, you know, oh, we rub on yourself. That's what I be saying. You know, when you wake up in the morning, you excited when you're excited when you're excited. But story time, guys, I I woke up this morning and I was not excited for this drive. I was not excited to come to this city. I was not excited for really anything because it always feels like when I'm in Los Angeles, it's just some bullshit waiting to pop off. And I know a lot of people know that feeling. I know a lot of people understand what I'm saying because we go through life sometimes and we go to places and we force ourselves to go knowing what is going to happen every single time because nothing's changed. Besides the small rate going up. Okay. Nothing's changed. Besides this random man standing on the church stoop. Nothing's changed. But yet, and still, I expect change. I expect people to be different. I expect to be treated different. I expect to be treated with, you know, respect and things like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm moving on up and I'm doing good and doing good. But you have to come to the terms where... And I have to come to these terms where it's okay to not be around people who are never going to see the good in you. It's okay because at the end of the day, you still have good all up in you, right? No matter what they see, it's not going to change you, right? No matter what they see, it's not going to make you a bad person. Right? I have to come to those conclusions. So I wanted to share that with you guys because I feel like that is some real good conclusions to come to sometimes. Because as I kept saying and I kept going around and I kept making it, you know, everybody can see if you go back on my YouTube. And I love even the fact that I I have a camera as a motherfucking witness. I love the fact that you can go back and see me and my antics and how I act and all that stuff. So all these people, especially even my own mother, when when people want to say, oh, yeah, because you just act crazy and you just... But how long did it take for me to get there? How many videos, y'all, have I made of the same situation? Same thing, me trying to reach out to people, me trying to touch people. I'm showing y'all my travels. I'm showing you me. And like I said on my Facebook today, I'm shameless. I'm not hiding anything. If I need to apologize, I apologize. But I'm also grown enough now to be able to say what the fuck I want to say. Grown enough to be respected the way I want to be respected. If a person, stranger, blood, fam, if you can't do that, what makes you think that I would need to do that back for you? And sometimes we really need to start asking other people that. I do not owe anybody anything whatsoever. I've done my due diligence. I've apologized where I need to apologize. I've not only belittled myself because of these people, but a lot of us in my own little small little clan, and I don't know about you and your little clan, but a lot of us could have been different places already in our lives. I'm thankful for the place that I am. You know, everything happens for a reason. But a lot of us could have been different places in our lives if we would have had the proper support. I don't mean just monetary support. Anybody can get some money and throw it. Anybody can get some money and throw it. They do it all the time at strip clubs. But we don't want to listen to the truth of the matter that no, loyalty, love, communication. Those are the things that really matter. 
in a relationship, on a ship, on a ship to keep it from sinking. Those are the things that really matter. And because we go and we want to make it like, oh, well, you know, well, my stand, well, you know, it worked for me, you know, it worked for me and I just don't say nothing and it worked for me. Well, that works for you. Hello. And what works for you does not work for me. And what works for me doesn't work for you. Okay, great. I'm not trying to force anybody to speak and say what they need to say. I'm fine with being the only one standing up, as I already just explained even to another relative. Like, I'm just tired of having the same conversation. I'm tired of having the same conversation. The same instance when somebody can tell me I'm offending them by my honesty. By my honesty. Is the same instance somebody wants to tell me and try to offend me with my flaws. I know my flaws. You can't offend me. I think it's so funny because even Eddie Griffin, it was Eddie Griffin. Yeah, Eddie Griffin, I think it was the other night I was watching. He was so freaking funny. But he was talking about white people, black people, brown people, blah, blah, blah. But when he got to the end of it and he was, you know, he apologized. He said, if I offended you, if you you were this. And then he said, if I offended you and you're a Christian, well, fuck you. Because how can I offend you if you're a Christian? I'll wait. You supposed to be able to turn the other cheek. You supposed to be able to do this. None of us are living the none, none of us are living that, huh? None of us want to live that. Nah, I'd gladly be like, okay, yeah, I know my flaw. I don't, yeah, mm-hmm. I know I pop off because I'm tired of having the same conversation. Nobody ever wants to talk about that. I went and I, and I, like I said, I love this camera because it's, it's my own witness at this point. It's my own witness of growth. It's my own witness of yes, Lord, finally becoming that King that I always wanted to be finally becoming the King that I wanted to see around me, but never got to see finally becoming the King that, Oh Lord, you made me out to be since day one. I love love. I love giving love. I think love is dandy and great. But if we don't uphold standards for something, you're going to continuously fall for anything. And that's why most of the people, my friend, the whole day just came back to me. And this is a great day because we're still going to be fine. We're still going to be safe. And I'm going to continue on with this story time because I think it's so funny. And this is in... It, it answers the question for anybody out there that I've come to visit while in my little predicament and all this type of stuff. I'm fine where I am and I'm fine with not asking for help. I'm fine with not accepting certain things. And I used to think it was so weird when I was the first uh, lady on one of these videos. If you go back, I was talking about her on one of these videos. I had said that I offered her something and she basically she shunned me off real quick. Cut me off real quick before I can even really get out. Like, oh, no, but it's it. No, no, no. I don't need it. Whatever it is, I don't give a fuck. I don't need it. And I get it now. I get it now. Because as soon as you let a human know that you might need them. Hmm. As soon as you let a human know that you might need them. How many times? Comment down below. I want to see. Comment down below. Everybody that got a motherfucking opinion. Comment down below. How many times have you allowed a human to know that you kind of need them? Oh, can I use your microwave? Oh, can I take a shower? Can I wash my clothes real quick? It'd be the simplest thing. And as soon as you do that, the person completely changes on you. Oh, yeah, that's why you can't even wash your clothes nowhere. Yeah, that's why you did. Bitch. Where did you think I was washing my clothes before you? My clothes was getting washed. I just thought we was family. I thought we was cool. That's happened at every single location I've went to. Mind you, like I said, my clothes have always been washed. I must be the flyest nomad in the street. Still hair hair dyed. Still got the haircut. Hairline on fleek, bitch. Where do I need you? But as soon as you... Even, it's not a need, just, oh, I want to be around you, you know, oh, I want to, you know, come kick it with you, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, that's why you can't even do this. You can't even do that. You can't even. They belittle you, make you feel like less than a person, make you feel like less than a human. 
tear you down. Just ninja fruit. Ah, fruit ninja. Hmm. Comment down below, please. And if I'm if I if I'm if I'm spitting any truth tonight, please once again hit that subscribe button. But this is my life. This is my story. And I always say to people that I can't wait to write a book and I can't wait to tell my story. But then I get afraid to tell my story because I'm offending the people that are supposed to be Christians. Mm -hmm. Had to come to the realization, baby, I've been swallowing a lot. I've been swallowing a lot. I used to be over 300 pounds. You know I was swallowing a lot, okay? <laughs> But being talked about, but, but between being talked about fat, dark skin, and I don't just mean from strangers. I mean from family too. Okay? Let's all be honest. Okay? Because I'm going to be honest. I crack jokes. I have a temper. I have flaws. And I love them all. Let me explain to you why as well. And I want you guys to start loving your flaws as well. But use them like superpowers. I use mine very sparingly. Today was one of them days it was about time to use them. We're going to continue on with story time as well too. But today was one of those days to go ahead and use them. Because when you get to, when your standards go up and people are not meeting your standards and you know for a fact they're not trying to meet your standards, they think that it's a game, they think that it's funny, and it's not. As I said, I'm learning little lessons, little people keep, all our lives we were learn, taught uh, little sayings and stuff like that. Well, my favorite one that I just learned from Dave Chappelle, Dave Chappelle, yes, I've been watching a lot of comedian things, shout out to this lady over there that liked comedian shows but yeah <laughs> but you don't be, you don't come between a man and his meal you don't become you don't come between anybody in their meal you don't come between anybody in their livelihood and the more i come to my members okay the more i kept realizing that they did not care if they were coming between me and my livelihood they didn't care if I needed to bunker down by 6 o'clock because it was cold outside. They didn't care and understand until I popped off and said, look, stop. Ask. I'm not coming outside to talk to you. You had all day and you wait until someone else is not around to try to talk to me. And that says nothing about me as a person. That says something about you. What are you hiding? Because I'll talk to you around anybody. But you wait until you're alone to try to have a conversation with me. You don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. <laughs> don't do that. That confuses me. And you see, as I also said to somebody today, a lot of times people want to, oh, you have anxiety and you have depression. No, I was holding on to a lot. And that's a problem. I said also, on an, I think on one of my videos, I'm not sure yet, but if I haven't, I envy the Catholics and the fact that they have somebody they can go to inside of this box that's not judgmental, that's going to just listen, shut the fuck up for half a second and listen to what I'm saying. I've had a rough week. Listen to what I'm saying. I've sat in this van. I've sat in my van, people. I've sat in my van and I've had so many people come up to my van explaining to me how our situations are fucking relatable. One living in a one, two, three, three bed. No, both all of them living in a three bedroom house. Complaining about their neighbors. OK. <laughs> I have new neighbors every day. Sometimes they're not the nicest people. They don't bother me none, but, you know, they're not the nicest people to other people. But I, I'm not trying to go to a homeless person, sleep on, yeah, I have talked, on the ground, and I was, I was trying to figure out if I've talked about this, but sleeping on the ground and just be like, hey, I know, you know, we in the same predicament, you know, you know, I be, you know, cold some nights too. We're not. We're not. We're not. And for all you people around us, liking and thinking it's cute to walk around talking about oh I'm broke and I don't have no money but then all you do is spend money 
You're not broke. Broke minded, maybe. Monetarily not. Broke minded, maybe. Nine out of ten, yes. But monetarily not. You don't know broke. You haven't felt your ribs about to butt the fucking touch and all this shit. I'm not saying I have. I'm saying I've watched other people that really don't have. That was part of my travels, humbling myself. Trying to just humble myself to become more relatable so that I can be more helpful and understand where people were coming from. Where are my Christian folk? I'm sorry. Let me take that back. Because I know I don't want to offend y'all. <laughs> Anyways, story time. I feel like, you know, I just, the communication with the family and that's what I said about my travels. I wanted to start with my own family. I wanted to sweep up under my own front door before I try to sweep up under someone else's or whatever the song says. Sweep up under the own mat or something he said. Or she said, somebody said it. <laughs> But I wanted to make a change in my circle first. Be an example in my circle first. But all I've been met with is laughs in my face. Laughs about my God. Laughs about my, my faith. Laughs about my prayers. Laughs about my, my little rituals of just wanting to wake up and be fucking happy. Laughs in my face. Laughs in my face. That would cause anxiety, folks. That would cause depression if I allowed it to. And that's why I try not to stay around it very long. Don't know what's going on with my Cash App card right now, but it's making me very sad. <laughs> but all I know is... I kept saying that I wanted to stand for something. And the most the, the the more I keep saying it, the people that don't have any foundation are the ones that keep trying to tell me. That's it. Just keep trying to tell me. They're not telling me anything. It's blank, it's empty conversation. They don't and that's what gets my temper up because it's so empty and superfluous to me. When I act out and was popping off and this and that and another, everybody got a call. When, my, when, when I came out as a lesbian and I didn't come out as a lesbian, my father went through my phone and saw a text message to an ex, uh, one of my exes what I was dating at the time. That was a very simple, said, I miss you. A very simple message. Okay. He called everybody in my family, including my mother. Now, I have a question, though. Do you think my mother has called him to let him know that I became a youth minister? Do you think she called anybody? When my ex, <laughs> whatever the situation was, and I ended up getting a call from my one of my uncles telling me, oh, you not a man because you called the police and you not a man. And it... Let me turn the light on real quick so y'all can see how I'm about to look around. Because this is how I was looking around the whole conversation. You not a man because you called the police. You not a man because you, you, you not a man. You, the, yeah, the blinking and everything because that was me. That was my brain malfunctioning. I said, what are you talking about? I've never doubted the police. I've never doubted the police. <laughs> but you called then. Mm hmm. Holding others to standards helps me hold myself to standards. I apologize to my stepsister today. I even apologize to my mother today. Now, everything else was me being human because I really don't give a fuck. I am sick and tired of no one having to be held up to any type of standards, but will teach them to the next person. Teach them to a child. Oh, respect me. No. Never. Because it is earned, not given. I learned that 
when I'm out at campsites. Oh, we got a whole bunch of rules. You would think we don't got no rules. No, we got some rules going. And respect, honor, don't be a liar, and don't be dirty. All of them be rolling all into the, into play together. Specific, certain campsites got certain rules. That's the one that I roll with. And like I said, I like the standards to that one. That's why I keep going back to that one. Any other one, the standards are bad. I don't go back. I suggest you guys start doing the same. I do not appreciate every single time that I've tried to uh, 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 be nice to these family members and all this stuff. Like I said, the first thing an African-American wants to do, or I don't even want to say African-American because Africans be looking at us like uh, not our people. The first thing an American over here wants to do, a black American, is show authority. Show authority. That's why us niggas is over here anyways, because the other niggas was like, oh, no, that nigga need to go and I'm going to sell him to massa. To get more authority, to be on top. We are all equal. We are all equal. We are all equal. But the first thing I get to see when I pull up, because, you know, oh, this is going to show something and I'm tired of it. Child, you had to go and look for a bag of mine to try to put it out on a, on a, on a, on a, on a, on a stoop, on a curb, on a, some steps. And then you motherfuckers want me to be quiet about this shit because you don't want your fucking neighbors to know. Like I said to Athena, my daddy didn't want my, his neighbors to know either how he drug my ass up and down a motherfucking driveway because I, I was gay. Because I was gay. Because I was gay. Because I was gay. Now wait. This is a good story time, ain't it? Let me tell you why people have anxiety, once again, and depression. Because they have to hold too much in. They go around walking on eggshells. Did I offend this person? Did I offend this person? Did I offend this person? As I said to my cousin, I've been down so long, it looks like up to me. As soon as I figure out this cash app, and it's probably because I needed to sit down and I needed to relax. I needed to just be over tonight anyways. <laughs> I needed to just be over tonight anyways. Not be on the road. Not be just being feeling some type of way because that really makes me feel some type of way. But I love it because I'm going to call tomorrow and let my therapist know about it. I'm going to put it on these videos and put it on Facebook. That I'm triggered when I see your face. Triggered. I am not okay. Triggered. You need to stay out my way. Triggered. This is the real me. I'm okay with myself. Because I still have friends. I still have family that fuck with me. It don't have to be all of y'all. And now I realize that I wish it could have been in all this time, all my life. And that's what the problem was. But then I came to the realization that, oh, we, the ship ain't big enough anyways, baby. It's not big enough. It's not. And that's okay. The ark wasn't big enough either. I love animals. They can go. Mm. But that is some honesty for that ass. Anxiety and depression, you're really not just born with it. Remember that, parents out there. If you have some kids and they are exhibiting some anxiety and some depression, remember, they were not born that way. They were born happy, smiling, cheerful. Hey! The world and us and humans and shit and circumstances sometimes give us things that we do not know how to deal with. And sometimes it is somebody's job, like a therapist, to give us the proper tools. And I'm thankful for my therapist because I got to talk to her today. And she, I feel like, really cares about me. Genuinely cares about me. Genuinely cares about me. Remembers my name, remembers my birthday. Shit, I can't even get some of my own folk to do that, okay? <laughs> so, I really want y'all to take the time today, or tonight, whatever, and start releasing. 
I don't care how you release. Start releasing. I don't even care if anybody releases towards me. As I said, I got cursed out by my stepsister and still told her, okay, love you, sister. Bye. Love you. Love you. Love you. Because I'm sick of it. I'm sick of the bitter bitch face. Niggas want to be mad for shit over six months ago. Bitch, I've been living in a van and still been happy. What the fuck are y'all talking about? Empty ass conversation for me, baby. I just came to tell you I love you and bye. And that I won't be fucking with you no more. I done found a good purpose and a path that I want to continue on. And I'm sick of being around motherfuckers who think it's funny. Because my God, I don't play about him. The more I get and I level up, the fact that he let me see my daughter yesterday. Oh, yeah, y'all. Oh, yeah, y'all. Let me say that testimony to y'all because y'all just y'all think is I'm just telling y'all bad stuff. I'm really not. I'm telling you my story. I'm asking for witnesses on this shit. As I said to my cousin, I said, you the only one that done seen me in this van crying. You saw me from the rooter to the tutor. You saw me from at my, at my girl's house, bro. You saw me breaking down at my girl's house. Y'all niggas ain't even seen the back, the, the back scenes, the backstage to this. <laughs> He's seen the backstage. <laughs> Gotta add your passes. But I'm just trying to tell y'all my story. I'm trying to tell y'all why I'm going so hard for God. Every time somebody tell me, oh, you can calm down, you can calm. Baby, don't tell me to calm down. When a crackhead talking about a crack. Is he silent? Is he quiet? Oh, that motherfucker animated, right? So I can be animated about my God. And if you don't like...